Hi guys, welcome to another Barb Stamps video. Today's video, I'm going to show you how to make this super cute 25710 box with these fun clips from the Occasions catalog and this awesome decorative ribbon border punch edge. And they can hold anything you want. I just have some fun colored Hershey's Kisses chocolates that I dropped into mine. And the flap just closes down put the clip on it holds it closed and two different kind of styles I've used the flower shop stamp set and flower punch and I've used two different flowers here so hold on just a moment I'll get my supplies and we'll get started we need papers to get started so here are the papers that I'm going to use on this particular project I've got some flirty flamingo that is eight and a quarter by eleven a piece of pool party that is two and three quarters by four and three eighths, a one inch strip of lemon lime twist, and then I have a half inch strip of whisper white. So the first thing we're gonna do is create the box. I'm gonna bring my Stampin' Trimmer in here, extend out my arm, and we are going to start out by putting the long side of the cardstock at the top. We're gonna to get the cutting blade out of the way, and we're gonna start scoring at two inches. So we're gonna score at two inches. We're gonna slide this over to five. Slide it over a little farther to seven, which is right over here on the arm, and then 10. All right, now we're gonna slide it back and we're gonna come in at the one inch mark and we're going to score from the five inch mark on the guide up all the way. And then we're going to slide over to six and we're going to do the same thing. Six here, five on the guide. There's a little pointer on my blade, my scoring blade that tells me I'm at five and I'm going to push that up. Next, we're going to rotate the cardstock so that the short edge, the eight and a quarter inch edge is at the top and we're going to score at one and three quarters of an inch and six and three quarters of an inch. Okay, so this is what we have so far. Now we're gonna leave this in this position and we're going to slide it back to the one and three quarter inch position. And now we're gonna cut off um, most of this um, section here. So this is our one and three quarter inch score line here. Most of this section is going to be gone. I need this little piece right here for the flap on the box. So I'm gonna bring my cutting blade in. I'm gonna start at the six inch mark on the guide and I'm gonna cut up. Okay, I have a little hiccup there. And then I'm gonna come down, move my trimmer just a bit. I've still got it at the one and three quarter inch mark and now I'm gonna come down to nine and I'm gonna cut down. So I can snip off this area here and leave my flap. Bring in some paper snips and I'm gonna do just that. Cut down to that and then we're gonna cut on this score line and you might not be able to see the score lines, I can see them though. Okay, so we have our little flap there. Okay, then we just need to cut off this little piece here. I think you can see the score lines there. That little section right there, we are also going to cut off. And when I cut these things, I like to cut at a tiny bit of an angle, just so when I go to glue my pieces together, everything fits together just a bit better. We're also going to cut on all of these score lines up to the one and three quarter inch. Again, cutting in on the diagonal just a tiny bit. So you end up wanting to take out a little tiny piece that is actually angled a little bit. All right, let me finish these. And finally, I'm gonna just angle this one just slightly to mimic the one I did down here. Okay, we're done with the trimmer. Get my mess cleaned up a little bit. Okay, so now we can fold on all these score lines and use a bone folder so you get a nice crisp fold, taking care to make sure that the bottoms line up 
every time you fold it over you want your bottom edges to line up okay that one we've got our little flap to come down and then we've got all of our bottom pieces as well okay so we've got our main box shape here so now we're going to do our gluing I like to use liquid glue so I have a little wiggle room so I've got this flap here that I'm going to cover with glue not like super thick just so that all of the area is covered you can see how really light my beads of glue are but yet I'm getting glue everywhere so I'm going to fold that in and then I'm going to bring this flap over and then secure them together see how nicely my score line lines up I'm just going to press that into place and since I didn't use a whole gob of glue um, I don't have any excess glue spilling out which is, is what I want okay so now we have this and then we have those score lines that we created when we were making the box where we started at the five inch mark and went up on both sides we're going to kind of push our fingers in to those to make them fold in okay just slightly then we can glue the bottom of the box together fold the two smaller flaps in add some glue to this flap and then to this flap here and glue those together and then I like to press my hand in or use my bone folder going inside the box just kind of using my bone folder to press that down like that so there we have the bottom of the box we've got this side pressed in on those fold lines and then this is the lid or the flap that's going to come over the top and that's going to be our box so now we can do some decorating of the box and I've chosen the flower shop stamp set along with the diagonal stripe stamp set so to start out with I'm going to start out with the diagonal stripe stamp set and it's a clear mounted stamp set so um, it's got the cling foam on the rubber and I'm just going to leave it in that stamp case I'm going to bring in my pool party ink pad and I'm just going to press ink onto my stamp covering just like one side of it okay my piece of cardstock here this is pool party also it measures two and three quarters by four and three eighths I'm just going to set that on there bring in this piece of scrap paper and then I can just press the ink onto the cardstock without getting any ink on my fingers which would of course transfer to my project because that's my luck okay and we pick it up and we have this wonderful diagonal stripe image and now we're going to trim this piece I did it as one piece because I want uh, it to kind of flow on the front of the box. So now I'm going to cut it at one and three eighths. And then I have two coordinating pieces. So one of these is going to go on the box right here. The other one's going to go on the flap. And then they're going to match. So you can see how there will be some continuity to those pieces which I thought was kind of fun so I can go ahead now and glue these onto the box whoops make sure they're gonna be the way that I want them so this is gonna go right here on the front flap of the box And then this one's going to go down here on the bottom. Like so. You can push your hand on the inside to get that glued down. So now when you close the box, uh, you do have that little bit of continuity there with the flap, which is kind of fun. Okay, moving on, we're going to bring in the Flower Shop stamp set. And I've chosen to use this stamp for um, this box. 
So I've got a scrap of lemon lime twist here and I've got some lemon lime twist ink and I'm going to ink up the stamp and I've got a black sharpie mark there which just tells me uh, which way I need to hold the stamps for the punch to work on these. And I'm going to do this two times. Okay, so here's my punch. I've got the same black sharpie mark there so I know which, uh, which way. So I'm just going to punch this flower out like so. And then for this flower, I'm going to use our half inch circle punch. Whoops, I need to trim some of that scrap off. Use my half inch circle punch and get my little circle. And so I'm going to do this for both of the other colors, the Flirty Flamingo and the Bermuda Bay. So what I'll end up with is the three different flowers with the three different flower middles um, glued to the centers. And then I'm just going to add those to the front of my box. All right, grab my Flirty Flamingo, some glue, and we'll just kind of stick that one right there. The Bermuda Bay, uh, about like so. Got a Stampin' Dimensional over here for this Lemon Lime Twist flower, and I'm just going to add that one right there. Again, we'll just press those all from the front. Next thing up is to use our decorative ribbon border punch with the strip of lemon lime twist. And this is just a one inch strip. And so I'm just going to feed it into my punch, making sure it's butted up against the back of the punch. And I'm just going to punch it. I'm going to slide it along. As you can see, there are these silver printed features on this punch. And so I'm going to line up uh, the design. Well, I'm going to put it down because I can see better that way. I'm going to punch again, and that should be all I need. Clean up my mess. And I'm going to add a tiny bit of glue to this flap here, just right on the edge. Just the skinniest bead of glue here. And then I'm going to snip this apart. And I'll kind of find what I think is a good spot. And then I'll just stick that on there like that. Come to the back here, snip off the excess. And then the box is just about finished. I've got my half inch strip of Whisper White cardstock. I have a fun little greeting from the Fruit Basket stamp set called You Are the Sweetest, which I thought was really cute. And I've got some Bermuda Bay ink. So I'm just going to ink that stamp up. Center that, whoops, on my little strip of white. And then that's going to kind of go on the edge here. Hmm, probably about like so. And then this side, I'm just going to flag with my scissors. And I've done this numerous times, and a lot of you guys may know what's coming. I just snip up the center with my paper snips. And then I come in from both sides from the corner to that center. And then I can just add this to the box. A little bit of glue there. I'm going to put it about in the center of my diagonal striped piece like that. And we are just about done. I have some Hershey's chocolates here that I wrapped up in one of our 3x6 gusseted cello bags. I'm just going to drop that down inside there. I'm going to fold that up and then I'm going to add one of these fun little clips to it. Oops. Fold that down, add that fun little clip right there on the edge. And then our final little uh, feat here is going to be to add some of this super cute Flirty Flamingo striped ribbon. And we're just going to tie a simple knot around the edge of this clip. About like so. Snip that off. And then for the ribbon here, I thought I'd do a kind of a fun little thing. I'm going to fold my ribbon in half on itself. And then I'm going to start on the folded edge and snip up 
to kind of make that fun little, oh, I guess you could call it a snake tongue or a forked, uh, forked end on this ribbon. Again, you fold it in half on itself, starting at the fold line, and you cut up, and then you get that fun little piece there. So there you have it. There is my cute little 25710 box. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I think they're just adorable. And um, if you need any supplies to create your own little 25710 box, I would appreciate your business at shoppingwithbarb.com. Please give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, if you learned something new. And always remember to subscribe to my channel down here if you want to be notified when I upload new videos. So thank you so much for watching, and I hope you all have a wonderful day.